Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Harley Quinn. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, now that they know that Bruce is the one who has Frank, it's just all about trying to find out, well, where is Frank being stashed at? Well, easiest way to do that is to kidnap Bruce. Initially, they wanted to use Selena as a mean to draw him in, but she doesn't even want to even give him that inkling of an idea of, like, let's be in the same room together. It's like, when I break up with someone, I'm a, I, I cut all ties with that person type of breakup, which I'm like, okay, it's interesting because, like, how people can, like, fall into those categories. Either you're someone that's like, I can say decently, like, okay with my past, like, exes or something, or you can be like, no, it's scorched dirt, like, we are not, we, you don't exist to me anymore. Just interesting. And I, I think it kind of fits Selena's personality to be like, oh, yeah, I completely cut ties with you. And so, you know, kind of throwing it, throw, easily just throwing aside the whole, like, yeah, like, he's got his abandonment issues, you know, the whole, like, his parents getting murdered in front of him, so, saying it's so blasé, but I think there's almost, like, a layer to that, because it's like, right, you, it kind of gets thrown in your face all the time, yes, yes, we get it, Crime Alley, murdered, the Pearls, we get it already, to the point you don't even, you're like, ah, oh, the Wayne's murder doesn't mean anything to me anymore with all these iterations, so I feel like you can almost look at it as almost a layer like that, but obviously it's just Selena just being like, yeah. I don't care. Um, I'm also surprised, like, Harley and Ivy... I mean, to be fair, they're still staying at her place, but it's like, yeah, you can't be too, like, upset. Because, I mean, Harley kind of moved past the whole, like, oh, Ivy and Catwoman were a thing, but to be fair, it's like, yeah, it was a long time ago, and obviously Ivy made it clear, like, Selena never felt the same way, but also um, that obviously Harley means the more to her. So I guess, like, Harley's able to just kind of put that past her. It's just, it's kind of... Uh, I would have just... I guess hardly they don't really know that Selena was just super happy to cause them like some mischief. It makes you almost wonder. There's some level layer to that where you almost go like, could it be that Selena just doesn't like like it's like right? She's just in a casual relationship. Like maybe like that's her way to prevent herself from getting her because maybe like maybe at one point in time she did like love and put her whole heart into something, but then walked away heartbroken. So now not only does she keep things super like casual, but also maybe kind of like kind of destroying other people's relationship too just to cause the chaos i don't know or maybe she's just a chaotic person and just always enjoys the chaos just on that level alone i don't know either way bruce is uh you know and you know uh in his breakup bag where he's just disheveled and stalking her on like her social media and Barbara's trying to tell him, like, yo, like, the Mad Hatter's up to something. It's like, no, nah, the Mad Hatter, I drove him out of town years ago. You're looking for something that's not even there. It's like, well, you're also, you're so busy mending your broken heart. You're not really uh, paying attention to things like you're supposed to, so. While this is going down, Harley's preparing to kidnap uh, Bruce on her own, which... Barbara at the same time is texting her like, yo, like, you want to hang out? Like, come on, like, what are you doing? And it's like, yo, texting her back to back. She's like, all I did was send her a few LOLs, and now she's just been texting me nonstop because they exchanged numbers uh, back at the escape room. But it's like, I thought that was so interesting because I thought, like, after everything they went through last season, too, like the college and everything, plus this, I, I thought... Um, because they had multiple runs in last season as well, didn't they? I thought they would have been tight enough where it's like, oh, I thought Harley would be okay with but it is still the thing of, you're a hero, I'm a villain. In particular, you're not just any hero, you're part of the Bat family, so of course that's not going to sit well with me. So, so she makes the excuse, oh, I'm staying in, as she prepares to uh, kidnap Bruce Wayne, which... That poor old, well, you have to, at first you want to say poor old woman that Harley beat up. It's like, apparently that woman put up a fight. Harley's like, Jesus, she, that woman still takes her vitamins. And uh, just before she could get the kidnapping Bruce, Barbara shows up being like, yo, how the hell are you here? Like, shouldn't you, you you're supposed to be staying in, right? And she's like, I'm security at this place. So, um, it is interesting that, um, because Barbara's perspective of like, oh, you have a list of friends. She's like, okay, you have Ivy and a list in there, which I'm like, whoa, that's a little shade thrown at Clayface and King Shark. But it's like, is that just Barbara's perspective, or does Ivy? I mean, does uh, Harley give off that vibe of like, no, they're not my friends? Because she probably does have a very short list of actual friends. Like, 
I mean, but I guess maybe you can almost put that as an indicative thing of like, and because I I've been through that phase of my life where it's like, oh, like I, a hard lesson I had to learn of like, don't make your don't make um, someone be your um, your everything. And I think Harley's kind of well, she kind of did that. She's still kind of in the process of that, but um. Cause I think it's just kind of indicative. I'm like, yeah, she's trying to bring King Shark and Clayface alone, so she's alone, so that Ivy doesn't worry about her doing this on her own. But I, I would think they would still be considered friends. But the fact is, Barbara doesn't consider them friends. Once again, I don't know if that's her reading too much into it, or whether like uh, Harley kind of exudes like the vibe of no. Um, Clayface and King Shark aren't my friends. I don't know. But, but I think it's also because Barbara doesn't really have anyone to hang out to. Because it's like, it's kind of the thing of like, right, she's with the Bat family. But she's like, oh, I'm like maybe you could use a hug. And then she's like, ooh, yeah, right. Because, uh, no, of course not. Because we don't do that. So it's like, right, she can never get too close to like, yeah, like her and like Nightwing are on good enough basis. But it's not like a, oh, let's hang out together. Like her and Harley, like, I mean, I wonder how would the rest of the Bat family feel about that? I mean, to be fair, you did an escape room together and they didn't bother with you because you weren't really doing anything villainous at the time. I mean, granted, he still has Frank because he knows Ivy is up to something. I wonder what, it, did they have any, like, past in this or not? Probably not. I mean, probably other than just the whole, like, Poison Ivy and him. Like, I'm wondering, like, did they have any passes, like, her as Pamela and him as just Bruce or something like that? But most likely not. But either way, I really like the fact is that it's just kind of an interesting parallel between the two of them. That they probably do make interesting friends because they both do kind of have some codependency issues both of them both of them can be very clingy that when they click with a person they really try to like cling to that person so i think that kind of speaks volumes but both of them get kidnapped by the mad hatter which i love that whole sequence uh they're like oh my god another he's like oh i'm gonna have so much fun with you and he's touching barbara's face and it's like and Bar harley's like oh another run-of-the-mill perv he's like i'm not a perv he's like i i torture and murder none of that gross stuff um, and then moment he says, like, wait, you're Harley Quinn? He's like, oh my god, I should have known because of your beautiful hair, and he's sniffing it. He was like, okay, I'm not a perv, but I, I get why that could be seen as pervy. Which I also love his thing as a mind control people into, like, drinking, um, like, cyanide-laced tea. I mean, it's just like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, I mean, home dude is all kinds of messed up. This is actually, like... I'm not well versed in the Mad Hatter. Obviously, there's like a version of the Mad Hatter in Batwoman. It's kind of like, well, someone else found the Mad Hatter's hat. But other than that, my first introduction to the Mad Hatter was probably Gotham, I think. So, and I love the whole thing of like Jervis. Who names their child Jervis, right? When Harley, I love when she like psychoanalyzes herself. Um, that somewhere deep down inside, like that part of herself that's kind of a decent person, it's, it's still kind of there, you know? Um, aside from all the kind of the craziness of Harley Quinn, like, Harleen Quinzel is still there somewhere. Because she was just kind of, like, leaving uh, Batgirl to her advices, being like, yo, uh, yeah, are you just going to mind control her so she does some stuff, right? It's like, yeah, text me afterwards. But it's like, right, um, who are you trying to convince that Batgirl isn't your friend, her or yourself? And it's like, yeah, she doesn't want to admit that on some level she does like Batgirl. And it's like, right, you're going to leave her to some pervert like Jervis Tetch. And it's like, right, goes back and helps. So they make quite the dynamic team. But because um, aren't they? No, I'm probably no, I'm thinking of. Well, isn't like because I'm about to say, isn't is Cassandra Kane part of the Gotham Sirens? She's, is she? I don't know. Because, I mean, she was, once she Batgirl for a while before she became her own hero. No, it's probably not the Gotham Sirens I'm, I'm thinking of. It's probably because of the Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of one um, Harley Quinn. Uh, it's probably what makes me think, um, I'm, that's probably what I'm confusing that with. Because I don't know if, I don't know if she's ever been part of, the, like, the Birds of Prey in the comics and stuff like that maybe putting all that aside attention and all that i just i was just thinking about the fact that they make a neat little pairing and it's just interesting because after you know once again she wasn't was because i was looking it up her code name is like at one point it was like black bat i think is what was her name at one point in time but her other name is or her her code name is orphan um like 
her just Batgirl and Harley working together makes me kind of think of that. Even though, once again, she's like a little girl in Birds of Prey, and so Cassandra wasn't, you know, one of the Bat family yet. Either way, putting all that aside. I also love that uh, Harley went full Negan and bashed in the Mad Hatter's head. I was like, oh, cool. So, no seeing that character again. To be fair, this show's not too afraid for just, like, randomly killing off villains like that, especially when you're, like, not mainstays. It's just like, you just, I mean, I will always go back to the fact that they just so casually killed off uh, Scarecrow in season one. So it's like, yeah, you just randomly kill villains in this universe because we don't have to worry about continuity. We'll kill who we want to kill when we want to kill them, so poor bastard. But it was more, it's like, oh, wow, did you just kill him just to contradict the point that I said that you were a good person? And she was like, no, I kill assholes. Don't think, don't read too much into it. And it's like, oh, friends, it's like, okay, we're in the realm of friendship. But when someone texts you, LOL, period, that means the conversation's over. She leaves and kidnaps Bruce right under Barbara's nose. So it's like, cool, didn't do the best job in the security front. But it's like, hey, you stopped, um, Mad Hatter from shipping out his hats that were going to mind control people, so that's a win. I also love that there's this whole little thing that we never get any like context for, that I guess because she, either just from her continuous, go, continuously going into the green, uh, obviously uh, Ivy like gets all like the plants like overgrow inside of uh, Catwoman's place, and also like that flower dress pops up on Ivy. I don't know whether she like was subconsciously doing that because she was going back into green got lost in there or is it just like no like continuously being in the green kind of jump started at either way so that was kind of interesting and they have bruce so it's definitely going to be interesting to see what kind of torture they do i mean catwoman made sure the bell out of there before it's like oh i can't even let him know that i, I can't be here when he wakes up so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out uh but on the other side of the episode we have uh, King Shark going back home. His father died. Uh, and now, like, right, the throne passes to him by birth because he's the older brother, but he wants to pass it to his uh, brother, Prince. And so, who's voiced by uh, Gary Anthony Williams, which I was like, I had to make sure it's who I thought it was. I was like, it is. Uh, Uncle Ruck is himself uh, from the Boondocks. Um, uh, along with a little plethora of things, because I think he's been on, like, Whose Line Is It Anyway? I think I've watched some here and there, but I, I want to say he's kind of known for them. But maybe he's just special guest star. I don't know if he's up there continuously, but I know um, I know he's been up there before. But, like, the Boondocks' is Uncle Ruckus is probably one of the things I best know him for. But you, you look him up, you've seen him in a plethora of things before, I think. Either way, uh, tensions and all that aside. I legitimately forgot that King Shark was married because the moment he was almost like, ooh, I'm going to take this scepter and I, I'm going to take all the power. His wife was like perking up and he's like, I'm just kidding. And she was just like, oh, you asshole. She was so upset because she was so happy. Like, oh, my God, I'm about to be a queen. Oh, never mind. So he passes it to his brother. But his brother's like, yeah, I'm about to sell um, our kingdom to Ocean Master. It's like, well, you know, we've been at war with the Atlanteans for so long. And it's like, yeah, but their money's just as good as anyone else's. So. Which, um, it kind of, it sucks that he wants to sell the kingdom considering, um, what this place means to them. But for him, it's like, no, you, I get to finally do what I want to. I get to have my own freedom because he's the one that had to take care of the things. Like the fact is King Shark got to go live his life above land. The fact of the matter is I'm the one that got stuck taken. You even admitted, he even said earlier in the episode, it's like, right, that, you know, he's, he thanked his brother for being the one that's kind of there uh, dealing with their dad, diapers and all. And he's like, right, we shit in the ocean. The fact of the matter is you must, you got to know how bad it is if someone has to wear a diaper. You got to kind of like run away from all your responsibilities. But I'm the one that got to stick. I'm the one that had to stick around, be the good son. So it's time for me to be selfish for once. So, but um, sadly, it turns into a fight between the two of them. Which Ocean Master was like, "No, I get it. I have a dick. I have a dick brother." And it's like, "Yeah." He's like, "It's Aquaman." He's like, "No, we get it. We already know." Which I'm like, I wanted to have to add that in there just because it's like he kind of flexes on the fact is like, "Oh yeah, my dickhead brother." Aquaman. It's like, you know, once again, if it wasn't for the Aquaman movie, I wonder, are they able to make that reference? Because it's like, yeah, even if you've never seen a DC comic, never uh, read any of the comics, you would at least know that because of the, um, the because of, you know, the Aquaman movie. So I wonder, is that an extra reason why they added that in there? I also love, and maybe this is me 
reading too much into it. The fact is that they made Ocean Master look the way he does beneath the helmet because he acts so cool and suave. And then he's like, oh, my helmet. You know, it's like part of me wonders if they do that kind of it could be in contrast with Patrick Wilson, who plays him in the movie, because it's like, OK, he's kind of a handsome bastard. Like, I don't know if that's just maybe being more true to what he looks like, maybe in the comics without like the mask and stuff on. Like, maybe that plays into his insecurities in the the comics, but maybe like, oh, oh he's kind of a handsome dude in the movies. Like maybe that's what that's just supposed to be. I guess maybe kind of leaning into the fact is, like, oh, he uses the name Ocean Master, but Troopy Totus, he's a dork. Maybe that's what that's supposed to be leaning into. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe that's just me being mean. Um, but regardless... Uh, I wasn't expecting that tussle between King Shark and his brother to get so bloody. I mean, they're tossing around, like, literally they swipe past two people and, like, cut off both of their arms in the process. And um, King Shark didn't want things to go this way. He's like, we could, like, rule things together. We could, like, take, like, turns, like, running the kingdom. That way we don't have to give it up because, like, there's so much history here, which I love Ocean Master being like, oh, a thousand years. Is that human years or shark years? And they both just look at him. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I'm just doing the math. I don't know if, I mean, I actually don't know. Like, I would assume shark years are just human years. I'd assume. But also, they added that little dialogue thing of like, oh, yeah, the fact is that we don't uh, get dementia. Like, yeah, that's the one thing. What was it? Uh, Deep Blue Sea. It's like, it's the one thing that they got right. And, he, and King Shark talking about why didn't they adapt the novel, which first and foremost, I don't remember that movie that well. Also, didn't know that was based on a novel. Interesting. Um, but uh, sadly, King Shark in the process ends up having to kill his brother, making this 14. Because he's like, you know, sometimes like I have my like my thing, my blackouts, and it's like, but 13 times, it's like, he has talked about the fact is he ate all his siblings, this is his only brother left, and he ended up killing him, I mean, granted, you didn't eat him, so it's a little less blackout and more like, unintentionally, but intentional, because you were defending yourself, because he was trying to kill you, but, uh, yeah, that's actually really heartbreaking that it came down to this, so he kind of has no choice but to kind of take the throne down, because without him, no one else, he's the only one left, uh, with legitimacy to the throne, not unless there's some um, other uh, kids out there that uh, he just isn't aware of. Not 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 necessarily his own, but you know maybe his dad had other kids that he wasn't aware of, or like some uh, illegitimate children type of thing. We'll ultimately have to wait and see where things kind of go for uh, King Shark going forward, and also how this whole Billy Bob Thornton thing is. We're getting tidbits here and there, but how that's all playing out for Clayface. Maybe probably a future episode, like half the episode, will be dedicated to everything with Harley and Ivy, but then like Clayface. That is also another thing that's kind of a, an interesting thing about this season. It's like the previous seasons, they were all kind of in this together. Like it was like anytime they were up to something, it's usually as a unit, as a group, but they are kind of disjointed now, and maybe that kind of once again, kind of plays with the notion of, yeah, like, Harley's got her baggage and she is clinging because all she's clinging to right now is Ivy. But it's like, oh, yeah, I'll turn to King Shark and Clayface when I need something. But, yeah, I'm fine. If I have to do it by myself, I'll do it by myself. And it's, she's just focused on doing stuff for Ivy. Like, you know, I think maybe that's kind of a deeper underline for this season, maybe. I had also forgot to talk about the uh, the opening with a uh, rat catcher f having a, a, a controversial relationship with a uh, a rat, which was all right. Well, you got James Gunn in this who did the Suicide Squad movie, and now you add in R Rat Catcher One, who's in a relationship with a rat. But it's like, does Rat Catcher Two does she exist in this continuity or not? That's kind of a question. So. If she does, that's got to be weird seeing your dad making out. I mean, because it doesn't seem like he's at... Well, they did talk about him kind of living in the sewers and stuff, so... But I think that's just him just not necessarily just 100% living on the street. I think that's just the nature of, like... Well, a combination of that plus just the nature of the character and being one with the rats and stuff, so... Stop, thought that was just kind of an interesting thing I almost forgot about. Either way, like I said, it'd be interesting to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.